Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the Weather Extreme video for Saturday, August the 20th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and gosh, where has this year gone? Here it is, the latter part of August already. Well, we've got some interesting weather ahead of us, so let's get to the SkyCam network to start with. And there's a shot from the Birmingham SkyCam and the Daniel Building downtown. And we certainly have a beautiful sunrise with a few clouds up there, mostly high and mid clouds. We can see a few clouds look like high clouds on the horizon from Decatur. And then another nice shot as we uh, look down at the sunrise from Dauphin Island down at the coast of Alabama. Our surface map this morning uh, <laughs> doesn't show a whole lot different from what we've seen almost all summer, it seems like, with surface high pressure over the southeastern U.S. and uh, the eastern half of the country. And in the upper atmosphere, of course, we're still dealing with a pretty strong ridge that's just to our west, and I mean just to our west. And, of course, uh, you can see in the central part of the country there some uh, uh, complex of showers and thunderstorms. And that uh, complex, or MCS, is uh, certainly keeping things cool where that is. And they're getting some rain, but we've seen a few warnings up that way, too. It is rather warm across the country this morning. As you can see, the uh, yellows and orange values basically looking at 60 and above. So uh, all the way up into southeastern Canada, it's uh, in the 60s across the uh, southeastern U.S., we're dealing primarily with the lower 70s. Highs yesterday, oh, look at that uh, that white and black area over Texas and Oklahoma where uh, those values were uh, in the 106 to 108 range. Ugh, wow, heat makes, uh, makes our 96 or 97 not look too bad. I had 99 at my house yesterday. This morning, we're uh, generally in the lower 70s across the central Alabama area. And, of course, uh, on the QPF, you can see that uh, there's no rain over Texas uh, as they're being protected by that upper ridge. And in addition to that, we're seeing most of the rain kind of around the periphery of that ridge. Uh, and, and that is uh, always a possibility. And, of course, on radar, uh, right on the northern edge of the regional shot, you can see there in central Missouri that large complex of thunderstorms. It is right ahead of that large complex of thunderstorms that SPC has a slight risk for severe weather for today. Day two, the slight risk extends into New England and the mid-Atlantic states. Now, the tropics is where a lot of action is going on, and we have Harvey over in the um, western part of the Caribbean, we have an unnamed, as yet unnamed storm, the red area that has a, I think it's 70% chance of becoming a tropical system in the next 48 hours, a named tropical system, which that would be Irene, and then we have another one off the coast of Africa. Very quickly, there's a look at all of the cloud masses. You can start over there to the left and you can see uh, Harvey. Harvey is a tropical storm and that is not expected to do a whole lot. Then we have what is likely to become Irene either uh, uh, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, or the next day. And then we have the one that uh, is likely to stay out in the Atlantic. Let's take them one at a time. There's the infrared image of Harvey, and Harvey is a tropical system, a tropical storm. And Harvey's track is likely to keep it uh, at that because it is very close to land. So it will be dying over uh, Central America and uh, Southern Mexico. Now, the next one in line, the one that could become Irene, is approaching the Lesser Antilles. You can see, actually, some of the uh, um, thunderstorms way ahead of where the center would be located is uh, actually approaching the Lesser Antilles or the Leeward Islands. And this one has some concerns, and here's why. There's a look at the computer modeling, and you're going to see it on the GFS. Uh, the GFS is uh, definitely following along with this. As a matter of fact, yesterday, I was looking at all the different GFS models, <clears throat> and uh, you know the the different runs and the result was that it actually brought it up into the eastern gulf so uh, now today it seems that the shift has been back a little bit to uh, the east and in, in the or over florida so we're going to have to be watching that one there's a look at the one behind the future irene and that one is likely to stay out into the uh, atlantic away from an, any uh, land masses whatsoever. All right, the 06 GFS model run, and here we go. There is uh, the ridge 
We've got these uh, troughs uh, that continue, these short waves that continue to beat the ridge down a little bit. Of course, the ridge uh, pumping up into the western part of the country. And that is this afternoon. Tomorrow, at Sunday afternoon, we can see that uh, there's a fairly strong short wave moving through the Great Lakes. And that short wave will be associated with a cold front, a weak cold front nonetheless, but a cold front coming through uh, the Ohio River Valley and by Monday, that cold front actually could move through here, bringing us some uh, slightly drier air, and uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, probably see a little bit of an increase in shower activity as a possibility on Sunday, but still only in the uh, scattered category at best. We stay under just a slight northwesterly flow for Tuesday, but notice in the lower right corner of your map, notice there is what could be Irene, uh, although it is very close to Hispaniola and Cuba, and the terrain down there very rough, so we'll have to be watching for that and whether or not it can uh, actually develop with, that, uh, with the terrain that close to it. We can see it over Cuba on the Wednesday the 24th. In the meantime, we have a very nice trough coming through the Ohio River Valley that is likely to give us a little bit better chance for showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday. Thursday, uh, the tropical system is approaching the southern tip of uh, Florida, and with that, we're seeing the trough open up, so you can see exactly where uh, the system is likely to go, and indeed, on Friday, it shows the system coming up into uh, Florida and uh, South Florida, and looks like it could, uh, if the GFS is right now, it could uh, kind of rake Florida from one end to the other. And then by uh, Saturday, a uh, week from today, it puts it uh, in the vicinity of Savannah. Uh, and again, this is the upper uh, chart, uh, but just so you see, it puts it in the vicinity as we look at the surface chart, uh, puts it in the vicinity of Savannah on Saturday. This is not good for us in terms of giving us any rain potential because this puts us basically on the dry side of the system. Now, I'm not advocating or wanting the storm to come here or anything like that, but we, uh, so far at my house in August, I've had less than two-tenths of an inch, and this is the 20th, so we really could use some rain. Uh, going out slightly into Voodoo Sunday, there is the system, and it is uh, uh, over... Uh, uh, or moving up into the mid-Atlantic states uh, ashore, and so it would be giving those folks uh, some rain. Going way out into Voodoo now, it looks like we stay relatively under the ridge uh, extending from Arizona across to Georgia and the Carolinas on uh, the 9th, or uh, pardon me, the 1st of September. And then when we get to the very end of the period, uh, we've got uh, this big ridge, but notice the little X in the gulf. Under that, we have something mischief. So it looks like, as you would expect, August, September, uh, very uh, active in the tropics usually, or you know that's when the activity uh, peaks. So it looks like we're looking that way. So by all means, stay tuned to the blog over the next uh, couple of days as we watch the developments in the tropics, and we'll be posting information here. I expect to have the next uh, Weather Extreme video posted around 7.30 or 8 on Sunday morning. I hope that you have a wonderful day, and Godspeed. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faces that I see, all of the places close to me, they're all part of all the best things about home. Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.